This slide uh, shows in detail the cardiac cycle, and there's a, a movie of this available on the VUER website in the student area only for this uh, study unit. Just to um, outline for you how this is laid out, the top uh, series of three graphs are related to aortic pressure in red, left ventricular pressure in black, and left atrial pressure in red, and they are the top top traces. The ECG is then lined up underneath that with the relative timings very important. Across the top are the sections of the of the cardiac cycle beginning from atrial systole, isovolumetric contraction, that's when the ventricle contracts against closed valves, both the inflow and outflow valves are closed. Then when the aortic valve opens, we have the rapid ejection phase. Uh, later, later on in systole, we have reduced ejection. When the aortic valve closes, the mitral valve is still closed at that point, and we have what's called isovolumetric relaxation. In other words, the ventricle relaxes uh, in the setting of both inflow and outflow valves being uh, closed. Then the, uh, when the uh, left ventricular pressure falls enough, the, the mitral valve is uh, forced open and there is rapid ventricular filling. And then as uh, uh, coming, and then in the latter part of uh, sit diastole is reduced ventricular filling or diastasis. Just a couple of general points before we get on to specifics. The electrical events precede the mechanical events because uh, the heart muscle is excitable tissue and requires uh, that electrical activation. The second general point is that atrial systole, that is the contraction of the atria, which occurs about 0.1 of a second prior to the beginning of ventricular contraction or systole, uh, assists with ventricular filling to the extent of about 20% of ventricular filling. In other words, about 80% of ventricular filling is passive, where blood just flows um, from the lungs through the left atrium into the left ventricle, and then that's available for the ventricle to then pump out during systole. So when the left atrium and left ventricle are out of synchrony, and a prime example of that would be uh, in atrial fibrillation, with other examples being in uh, third degree or total heart block. Uh, here, that is a situation where the atria and the ventricle are out of synchrony, but the person still has 80% of uh, cardiac filling and 80% of cardiac function available uh, to, to them. <clears throat> now we'll come to some of the specifics of the cardiac cycle. The first uh, spectacular event that occurs in, uh, in systole is a ventricular contraction where there is a very rapid rise in ventricular pressure from left atrial pressure, which is low, up towards aortic diastolic pressure, which is about 80 millimetres of mercury. This is preceded just before by the QRS, uh, which is responsible for ventricular contraction. Just before this event is the the atrial systole, and during this contraction, you'll see that both atrial and ventricular pressures rise. This is because the mitral valve is open, and so the pressure rising in the left atrium under atrial contraction uh, manifests or is mirrored in the left ventricle as its pressure also rises. And this is where we get that 20% of filling, that last part of the filling just prior to systole coming out of the left atrium into the left ventricle. The QRS then follows this event. So it was the P wave responsible for left atrial filling and then the QRS related to the beginning of ventricular systole. At this point, when the atria has finished contracting, the mitral valve uh, closes as the ventricular pressure exceeds atrial pressure. Now, the four valves in the heart are all passive tissues and they rely on pressure differences between one and the other, depending on whether the valve is open or closed. So the mitral valve will close whenever the ventricular pressure exceeds atrial pressure, it snaps shut backwards and prevents backflow in a healthy person. The mitral valve will open on the other hand when left, atrium, left atrial pressure 
uh, is equal to or exceeds left ventricular pressure, and we'll come to that later. Now, ventricular pressure rises precipitously during the phase that's called isovectric volumetric contraction, and this is when both valves are closed. When left ventricular pressure reaches aortic pressure, that is, and that's where you actually measure diastolic pressure right at this point in time, and in this case, it's 80 millimetres of mercury. At that point, again, the aortic valve being a passive valve is forced open under the pressure coming from the left atrium, uh, sorry, left ventricle. And at this point, um, when that valve opens, there's a rapid ejection of blood from the left ventricle into the aorta, and this is known as the rapid ejection phase. So we get rapid flow out of the left ventricle into the, le into the aorta, where it then moves down the arterial tree. This process continues, so the ventricle is continuing to contract and eject blood, and it reaches um, a zenith at this point here, known as systolic pressure. And in this case, the systolic pressure is about 120 millimetres of mercury. You'll notice at this point, uh, the T wave commences. Now, the T wave is the commencement of ventri ventricular relaxation. And as the, uh, as the ventricle relaxes, it does one other thing. It starts to run out of blood. So that's two reasons why the pressure starts to drop precipitously in the left ventricle at this point. And we get what's called a reduced ejection phase occurring, coinciding with electrical relaxation and also mechanical relaxation as the ventricle runs out of blood. Now at that, at a point where the left ventricle pressure drops below aortic pressure, uh, the aortic valve snaps shut. And uh, shortly after this, we get precipitous drop in left ventricular pressure as it, uh, as it is now fully relaxed and it has um, been pretty much emptied of blood, not completely because there is some residual volume of blood left in the um, left ventricle at the end of uh, systole. Now, a really interesting thing happens to a healthy aorta, and I underline healthy, and I'll come to that in a minute. During the very first part of diastole, and that's what we're talking about here, very early diastole, the, the aortic valve closes and the aorta, uh, no longer receiving blood from the left ventricle, undergoes what's called elastic recoil. And during this elastic recoil uh, in a healthy artery that is elastic, the the blood is actually the, the blood is actually squeezed back, uh, and pressure slightly rises during this phase. And this increase in pressure is really useful for two main reasons. One, it it guarantees nice forward flow during the rest of the diastole, so it sets up a condition for continuous forward flow through the arterial tree during the rest of diastole when the ventricle is not actually providing blood to the aorta or the rest of the arterial tree. A second really useful aspect of this, uh, this elastic recoil of the aorta in early diastole is to provide blood uh, into the coronary tree. The coronary tree, that is the major coronary vessels, branch off the aorta just in this region, just near the aortic arch. And this permits uh, really good flow uh, through the um, uh, coronary tree in the early part of diastole. And the next slide will show that in depth. Now, what happens to the left atrium during, the, during systole? The left atrium now has a, a closed mitral valve, but blood is still returning from the lungs via the right heart. So blood is coming from the lungs and it hits up against the mitral valve. And so we have pretty much a linear increase in uh, pressure in the left uh, atrium during the uh, period of uh, ventricular systole. This little <laughs> blip here on the left atrial pressure is just a, re a reef reflection of the pressure as the aortic valve closes and this just causes a little pressure wave in the left atrial pressure trace. At the point when ventricular pressure has dropped to uh, left atrial pressure, which incidentally has been rising during uh, systole, the pressure's equalised and now the mitral valve uh, opens passively and uh, vent ventricular pressure now drops and, uh, and 
as the mitral valve opens, we get a, a, a big inflow of um, blood from the left atrium, which is now being filled with blood, and that quickly now fills the left ventricle. So we get rapid ventricular filling phase occurring during this early part of diastole. During the latter part of diastole, we get uh, blood just flowing from the lungs through the open mitral valve into the left ventricle. And of course, the aortic valve is, is closed during this all of this phase. So it hits up against the aortic uh, valve and we get this slow increase in pressure towards the end of diastole. This uh, latter part of diastole is sometimes also called diastasis. What happens to aortic pressure during this phase? Well, as I said before, the elastic recoil in a healthy artery is very helpful for maintaining uh, uh, aortic pressure during uh, the uh, latter part of diastole. For a, an artery that is diseased, as in hardened from, say, long-standing hypertension, we don't get that elastic recoil. And the coronary tree, as I said before, uh, doesn't benefit quite as much as from uh, in a healthy artery from elastic recoil. 